What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be previewing the 2020 AFL Grand Final between Richmond and Geelong and what's going to be an absolutely, well, it's one of the more intriguing Grand Finals we've come across over the last uh, few years with both teams for the first time ever, third will play fourth in a Grand Final which is extraordinary but it also pretty much explains that this is 2020 so uh, anything can happen, but these are the two teams. It's going to be a massive game. So here are my thoughts for the 2020 AFL Grand Final. Saturday night Grand Final, the first night Grand Final uh, in my history. I don't, can't remember if there's been one beforehand, but uh, this is just going to be very exciting, very intriguing um, at the Gabba as well. So two Victorian teams playing an AFL Grand Final at the Gabba. That's just extraordinary in itself. And the two teams, Richmond, playing in their third grand final in four years. And Geelong, well, they haven't missed a final series since 2000. Well, they've played in every single final series, bar one, yeah, since 2007. So they're one of the more informed teams of the last decade. Richmond are one of the more, well, they are the most informed team in the comp over the last four years. So it makes this game so intriguing. Very different teams, very different dynamics. One that you probably expect will be very different at the Gabba as well. Um, and these two teams played at Metricon Stadium um, very, well, not too long ago, actually. I think it was round 16, and uh, Geelong got done by Richmond by 26 points. And they were absolutely dominated that night. And, well, we hope that it's not a repeat of that scenario on Saturday night. We'd still love to see a very, very close grand final. The weather's going to make it very interesting as well with a predicted rain and a few possible thunderstorms which could make things very, very interesting. And it would be 2020 if there was a few lightning strikes and they either have called off the grand final early or um, we had to have a, a delay for the next half an hour, 45 minutes of the game. So all is to play for. All factors are coming into this one. And I reckon, I reckon I'll give you the early tip before I explain my reasons why. I do think Richmond will win by two goals. Reasons for that, are obviously, um, I feel like Richmond's dynamic of a team, then they know how to play finals, so mentally they've already got that tick. Whilst Geelong also do know how to play finals as well, I feel like they haven't gotten to the point where they they know exactly what they're doing and they know how to win in these situations. So we saw them against a qualifying final against Port Adelaide where they were in a situation to win, but the pressure got to them and they sort of crumbled and Port Adelaide ended up winning by three goals. And um, then they got to playing Collingwood, who, uh, well, mentally Collingwood were up and about and a bit more cockier than they probably should have been. So Geelong absolutely switched it on. And then to get there, they had to beat Brisbane at the Gabba. Now, that is a whole other story. So they are mentally prepared for this one, as are Richmond. Richmond have played the tougher games, I feel. They lost to Brisbane at the Gabba. Um, and they also, they bet St Kilda at Metricon, but then bet Port Adelaide in rainy conditions Friday night uh, at the Adelaide Oval. So when the pressure's against the Tigers, they they know how to um, t turn it up a gear. Um, and Geelong, whilst I feel like this is a game where they won't crumble under pressure, I just feel Richmond have that dynamic where they are able to get a couple of quick goals. They're able to... Um, put the pressure back on the opposition. And with players like Shy Bolton coming through, you know, you've got your midfield of Cochin, uh, Martin, uh, down back, you know, you've got uh, your Grimes and Bolters in very good form, so you'll no doubt think he'll go to Tom Hawkins. And then at the other end, you've got Rewalt, you've got uh, Tom Lynch as well. Yeah, and you just feel Geelong's team defence can get on top of... Um, Richmond, but in saying that, Richmond just know how to move that ball forward, and they're, if their tools aren't working out, they're small stand up. You know, you got your pressure acts from Jack Graham and Shane Edwards. You know, they they're able to manipulate that contest and turn it against uh, the opposition when even though they have momentum, and that's up here, more up here than it is um, physically. So you know, if if you're gonna win this contest, you got to win it out of the midfield. And we saw that in the qualify uh, in the prelim against Port. Richmond got on top in the midfield, dominated the contested possession and clearances after half time. Geelong 
played their own game of football against Brisbane. I think Brisbane just stumbled to that prelim um, in the end mentally, uh, which is quite a shame because I thought they were the ones to be um, playing alongside Port Adelaide. But that's a whole other story. With Geelong, um, I think they can't let themselves get beaten up in that contest. You've got those big bodies of Selwood, Dangerfield, Guthrie, Managola, um, Ablett that can run through there as well, Duncan. You know, they've got a very, very deep midfield, as do Richmond as well. But what's going to win this is their run and their carry. Geelong have that precision football type. Um, when it's in the dry, they're able to uh, very much pinpoint each pass and play that chip-to-chip footy, slow, their, so slow themselves down, but also do that quick flick switch and turn it on. Switching will be another story, especially if it's wet. I feel like it'll have to be down the line and playing that contested stoppage football all the way inside each other's 50. That's where I feel like Richmond could win the game because uh, they are a stoppage clearance type team. They're able to win from contest to contest and their hard nuts of Koch and Martin are so dangerous. Uh, and then, you know, Bashahuli as well, his run and carry will be something to watch. Um, and it's Richmond's 8-18 to players that I reckon will have a more of an effect than Geelong's 8-18 to players. You know, you've got your top eight stars and um, you know, your key forwards and your key backs who will sit in that top eight to top ten range of your list. But then it's that depth period of players where you really need something to stand up. And we've seen over the past few grand finals that not one player wins you a granny. It's your 22. So that depth that's coming in has to have an impact and Richmond are able to do that constantly and that's where I think Geelong might get found out a little bit more and considering it's being a grand final Geelong haven't played a grand final um, since 20 have they been in one? No they haven't 2011 um, so Richmond no grand finals but we've seen that teams that know how to play grand finals can get found out and eventually um, they come tumbling down and Richmond have a dynasty on the line, I feel. You know, if they get the job done, they're going to be remarked as the Hawthorne three-peat, you know, the Geelong of 07 to 011. 011. You know, they're going to be that Brisbane um, period in the early 2000s. Every team has a period. Um, and Richmond's time is now. And if they win a third grand final in four years, it makes you feel that they are the best team of the decade but also one of the best teams to ever play the game and that's where I think we could see highlights on Saturday night my pick for the Norm Smith medal well obvious choices are Martin, Hooley, Cochin those types of players can stand up I feel like it'd be someone different someone unique Jack Graham stands out he had a very very good 2017 granny um, and 2019 he didn't play so he's getting back into this one again and I think he will be able to have an impact with his tackling and his pressure, and he can hit the scoreboard, which I think um, is so unique to have one of those players that can stand up in those situations, and he's been able to do that, and I reckon he's a smoky for Richmond. If it's Geelong, I'd love to see Gary Ablett, and that's one of the reasons why if Geelong win, that's why I'd love to see that, is that Gary Ablett goes out on such a high note, you know, winning that flag, the fairy tale of coming back and winning it with Geelong, and getting the Norm Smith medal. That'll make him go down as the greatest AFL footballer to play the game uh, by far. Uh, there's no conversation needed for that because he's the GOAT of the modern era. And you can compare errors and compare players from different times, but he'll be the GOAT of this modern era, of the AFL era. Whether he's the greatest of all time of our game can be still a question mark because so many players are in that conversation. But Gary Ablett winning a flag in 2020 after everything he's been through with his son, his injuries, and coming back to Geelong, wanting that fairy tale, being so close, it'll just make him one of the more immortals of our game. And same with Dangerfield. Um, you know, whilst you love to hate him and he has that char charisma about him, full on uh, respect for him, and I'd love to see him get that flag and tick that uh, box off, the, uh, tick that box. Let me know in the comments below what you're thinking about this grand final. It's going to be a very intriguing game. And I think being at the Gabba with the two strips of turf from the MCG, how ironic that two Victorian teams are playing in the grand final at the Gabba and there's still two trips, two, and there's still two strips of the MCG there. Ironic.
You tell me. But let me know in the comments below your tip and who you think will win the Norm Smith. And let me know your thoughts about this game as well. It's going to be one fiery clash and I'm very much looking forward to watching what's going to be the last game of 2020 for the AFL, the grand final. And it's going to be absolutely massive. Thank you so much for watching this preview. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe for plenty more AFL and Port Adelaide content if you're a Port fan as well. My name is Anthony and as always, come the pair.